Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're looking at something I think is really cool. A vintage Buck Rogers adventure game. This is High Adventure Cliffhanger series from TSR. And uh, this uses the original Buck Rogers setting, or the more original Buck Rogers setting, not just the basic sci-fi stuff. Let's read the back of the box here. The future of your dreams. Welcome to the 25th century, a time of super science. In a time of rebellion against the powerful invaders of America. The war against the hand, huh? A time of mighty airships armed with deadly disintegrator cannons. A time of valor filled with heroes armed with rocket pistols, jumping belts, and good old-fashioned courage. A time of danger and with shadows filled with black-hearted scourges. A time for a hero like Buck Rogers and you. Now, um, this was effectively a role-playing game. And this box that originally cost 20 bucks, and it had one supplement. Uh, they did do a Buck Rogers in the 25th century that was the more like the TV show where he was in outer space and stuff like that. Uh, but this one is more based on Armageddon uh, 2450, I think it was called. Uh, the book that inspired uh, the Buck Rogers stories, uh, and that is a little more based on um, a Chinese invasion of America. And you're fighting the Han Empire who have conquered America. And he wakes up in a cave and things are just crazy different. So anyway, let's open this up and see what we got. This is from 1993, like I said, from TSR. And uh, I liked this game quite a bit. I was lucky enough to find a sealed copy so we could open it. And make everybody else's copy more valuable. Uh, these are pretty hard to find, especially sealed, um, so it might be difficult to find these complete and uncut. Alright, so here we have our rule book. We have our adventure book. It uses the old style of art, too. Now we've got a whole bunch of tokens here, uh, mostly white ones. There's about six, yeah, about five or six red ones in there. They're just cheap little poker chips. It's like 10 dice. And then we've got World of the 25th Century. This has the same cover, just different background. 25th Century has a cloud. This one's darker. And here's the punch outs. These are probably the parts that are going to be missing. So we've got a couple of biplanes. Well, we've got six biplanes. We've got a hand airship and a rocket cruiser. And these are sectioned off, of course, so you could put different things on them. And on the back is nothing. Now here we have uh, Mongol soldiers on one side and uh, org soldiers on the other. So uh, we have a couple, uh, three women and uh, two, four, six, seven men. Mongol soldiers are all male. Uh, there's two, four, six, eight, ten of those. These are pretty cheap, and they're just fold-ups. So they didn't do a lot with miniatures back then. Then we've got uh, player characters, and they're lettered A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And then you have outlaws, which look like cowboys. There's uh, one with a blue handkerchief. Uh, our blue shirt and blue handkerchief, red sh uh, shirt with yellow handkerchief, there's two of that. Um, then there's bad bloods, which take up the rest of the row, but there's two different kinds. There's a green one and a blue one. And then down here on the last page, we have Viceroy of Chicago, uh, a Wong, Amka Zoro, Marco Calano, Lano, Lan Lu, Brown bear, who's, who's a brown bear, and then the uh, the Mongol emperor, um, a guy whose name I can't pronounce, but looks like uh, the air marshal Kavlui, then Lorette Luke, Cyclone Kid, it's very western themed. Uh, there's Lone Wolf, Nunha, L Lieutenant Gilda, Doctor Hewer. Commander McGregor, Black Barney, and then we've got um, 
Ardala Valmar, Killer Kane, Wilma Deering, and Buck Rogers. So, uh, yeah, quite a few little character standees that could go missing. Since this one's brand new, these are unpunched, but basically, they, they're, if you've never seen a standee before, I, I'm sorry you're so young and spoiled. Because these were pre-miniatures, we had to punch these out and fold them in half, and they would connect at the bottom, and then not, not stand up like they're supposed to. So there's quite a few there that could go missing. Then you've got your maps, which we'll look at in a second here. There's also a little mailer, which is just a customer response card. And then you have your fall catalog for uh, summer, fall 1993. Now the catalog has um, like Dragon Strike uh, was the big thing back then. And uh, it has all the box sets in it. Yeah, you yeah, your Dragon Quest game. Uh, some of the basic D&D stuff was still out then. Uh, in the Phantom's Wake. Uh, the Lankmar stuff. The Book of Artifacts. The Cardmaster Adventure Dungeon deck, which I actually thought was pretty cool. Uh, it's, it was for the lazy Dungeon Master and all of us. The, the second edition Monster Manual. All the second edition stuff. The novels. Uh, this was the pre-Time of Troubles box set, campaign setting, um, which was okay. And yeah, a bunch of novels. Let's see if they have any other setting stuff in there. There's Ravenloft. Uh, I liked Ravenloft the best. I thought that was really cool. Uh, there's a little bit of Greyhawk. There's one thing. Then there's the Buck Rogers thing and the War of the Han, War Against the Han. Which we'll look at in another episode. I do have that box. And we'll open that. Uh, al Qadim, And then there was the RPGA. Which was a really cool thing you could join. If you were playing in conventions. And stuff like that. It had some neat um, bonus stuff. Adventures. That sort of thing. In the magazines. Uh, which was Polyhedron. Alright so let's look at these maps. They're one-sided and they're very thin. The quality is not that good, but it's really cool because it's got the old school art from like the 40s. Um, the whiz-bang type of art from uh, that you would have seen in like the old newspaper strips and stuff like that. Uh, but this is basically just a, a map and different sections. Nothing too spectacular. Um, but the art is really cool, so it, it's sad that the paper is such poor quality, because it, it wrinkles very easily. So you gotta be real careful with that center piece, uh, because that will crumple very easily. Um, yeah, it, it's, the art is really catchy, I really like that style of art from the old timey stuff, but it's just such poor quality. That it's probably going to get destroyed fairly easily. Um, the other map is the outdoor map. It's got different terrain. It's got normal, difficult, rough, and impassable. And this is just a generic outdoorsy scene with different sections listed. There's D, M, C, E. It's not in any real good order, quite honestly. And it does have kind of that art style along the trim like uh, you saw on the other one which I dig but a lot of people aren't into the retro stuff like I am and it's got the list for the terrain here uh, and this is really just for battles um, you don't really need it you could get like a blank um, grid map somewhere and just use that if you don't want to damage the posters because these are probably going to be really difficult to replace honestly but yeah, uh, some of it's a little cheap. These are really low quality in my opinion. But they didn't really need to be high quality. The maps are the biggest disappointment because they are so cool around the edges. They have a lot of art. But they're very thin paper. Uh, these cardstock cutouts are actually really good. They're a lot thicker and I wish the others had been a little better. And they had actually made them so they stuck on a little stand like a, a lot of board games. That would have been better. 
the world of the 25th century book is just your basic uh, rule book. It's got a couple of strips in here too, or sections of strips from the old days uh, when Buck Rogers was real big in the 30s and 40s. And uh, if you go back and watch the, the old movie serials, you won't get a good enough feel for it. I'd recommend picking up some of the reprints of the comic strips of the time and reading Armageddon 2450. Uh, I think it was 2450. That was a much better uh, representation. Uh, there were two books. One came out posthumously from the author after he died. Um, I don't remember the name of that one off the top of my head. Yeah, the book was the book was called Armageddon 2419 AD by Philip Francis Nolan. Um, there are several different versions of it. I recommend trying to find a reprint of the original. There's uh, revised editions out there uh, that are pretty garbage, and you'll find like since it's public domain, there's a lot of reprints out there try and find uh the the most accurate copy you can uh it's actually a fun book and it had a lot of like predictive technologies like the bazooka stuff like that um the other book was called the air lords of han and that one wasn't quite as good but it was still worth reading it has kind of that pulp feel um pretty cool stuff so armageddon 2419 before anybody gets in the comments and starts lecturing me uh, I, I don't care, but you got your stats here. I think this uses the um, amazing engine or something very similar to it because uh, there's no there's no numbers for the stats. It's just good, better, best, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very simple game, but it, it's got a lot of cool concept stuff to it. Um, I thought the adventure setting was pretty cool because you know uh, war with China back in when this storyline was created was pretty almost silly uh but it takes place in the 25th century so and as we've seen recently uh china is a, a world power these days so it was very uh predictive of that but yeah it's got a lot of different sections in it the books are very detailed the art's good uh real solid it's got that old style and uh, everything's color coded in this book, so you can find stuff really easily. Um, yeah, it, the only thing it's lacking is really a GM screen. And here's the main rule book. <laughs> Look, that section's called What's Inside. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's. I think this was a fun game. I had a lot of trouble finding people that would play. Uh, because they didn't know much about Buck Rogers. And I think that was largely why this line didn't really work out. Is most people, most modern players, even back in 93, didn't know much, if anything, about Buck Rogers. And by today's standards, it's, the storyline would be considered a little sexist. Even though Willem, Willem Deering is a very important character in the story. Um, I think this was definitely worth checking out if you're into role-playing games. It's a little hard to find. Be ready to pay 30 to 50 bucks for it if you do. And the War with the Han is a little cheaper. I think I found one for six bucks one time. I've got a couple copies of it. Uh, but yeah, I like this one a lot. Um, I was real glad to find it still sealed so I could open it here. And it was put out by TSR back when they were trying new things and experimenting a little more. Uh, the 90s was really cool with TSR. They had a lot of really cool stuff out. Um, but this is definitely one that did, never really took off, and I'm really sad to see that, honestly, because I think the setting is really cool. Uh, the maps are really thin. Those are probably what's going to be destroyed, honestly, and be sure to check out the, make sure all the, the pieces are there for the standees. But that'll do it for this episode. This has been High Adventure Cliffhangers, the Buck Rogers Adventure Game from TSR in 1993. And uh, we've seen what's inside, so that'll do it for this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time on What's Inside.